entomb thy passion in its living grave. This is a grave statement from death, telling Savitri to entomb her passion for her dead husband. She must give up all that was there for him and live the ordinary mortal's life. Death has snatched away his soul as such a man. On that fateful noon, at that fateful noon, he has snatched the soul of such a man and he is now carrying it to his abode. He is taking it to his abode. It is in his possession. Savitri has no hold on it. But Savitri rises in a strength. Human Savitri, housing the divine Savitri in her soul, arises in a strength. And all in her mates with that mighty hour, the mighty hour of confrontation with death. In that hour, all her humanity has disappeared. Humanity, in fact, has been slain in it, in that mighty hour. She assumes a wide spiritual control over things. The divine strength takes charge of Savitri. She keeps, Savitri keeps the head of Satyavan on the ground. Satyavan was chopping the branches of tree and in that process he felt very uneasy as if shafts of pain were piercing through his brain. He comes down from the tree and lies down in the lap of Savitri. It is there Savitri sees immortal death standing in front of her to take away the soul of Satyavan. Savitri now keeps the head of Satyavan on the crown and follows death, follows death, leaving the dead behind. The poor human rule The limitations of humanity, human condition, of human mortality, she transcends. She crosses the human room and sovereign power, yes, the sovereign power, it is that which takes possession of Savitri. Hers is now the golden will the will that nobody can defy. She sees while following the spirit of Satyavan led by death. She sees eternal night stretching out of her night in a dire beauty. Here the immortal facing death. Immortal face facing her. Immortal face facing Savitri. His shape is in fact nothingness made real. He is born of nothingness and 
to confront Savitri, he has assumed his shame. His shape is nothingness made real. His limbs are monuments of transience. Such Savitri and such death. They oppose each other. The, the woman and the universal God, they oppose each other. Vacant eternities orbit hope. He is a sad, formidable voice, the voice arising from the adverse world and telling her this voice telling her to unclasp her passionate influence and relax she must unclasp her influence on the dead body of Satyavan and relax she who is she after all she is a slave of nature she has no hold on anything else, nature. She is a changing tool of the changeless law, the changeless law of death. It is of that law, she is a changing tool going from birth to birth. She must entomb her passion in his leaving grave and to the passion she is possessing for her Satyavan. She must entomb that thing and live in a living grave that is Savitri who is still living. She is a living grave. It is in that living grave she must entomb the passion of Satyavan and forget about the whole thing, and to whom the passion in its living grave. Mm -hmm.